hello friends. Another day, another lunch break wrap up for you. So we might have to rush through some of this. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about the books that I read in, shoot, Brittany, what is it? June? Must be June. And I think it's 18 books. Hold on, we gotta look this up. Okay, it is June, but it's only 15 books. Still, it was a huge reading month for me. And I read a lot of things. I was like sort of getting used to reading some more fantasy romance. I read some nonfiction. I read some poetry. Things started to like ebb and flow in my life. I don't know. There was some changes going on, not necessarily for the good. And sometimes I can like see that reflected in my reading just a little bit. I'm trying so hard to like lean against this corner to get out of the sun. It's so hot. I am ready for freaking fall. Like I want fall more than I want air and I want it to be 50 degrees out and it's going to be 80 for the rest of this week and it's already been 80 this week and I'm not here for it. So let's figure out how to organize this. I have all the books right over here. Don't know how I'm going to talk about them yet. We'll figure it out. Okay. So what I decided to talk about first are the two nonfiction and the one poetry book that I read. So can you see this? No, you can't. Okay, good. Um, the poetry book that I read, I just randomly found at Barnes and Noble when I was browsing one day. Oh my God, you can't see it at all. We really have to like hide to this side. Okay, so that is Changing with the Tides by Shelby Lee. This says, to the anchor, my head is still above water, though you wanted me to drown. Even your weight around my ankles cannot drag me down. This is written in kind of sections where well, the first part is the anchor and part two is the sail. And it says it touches on topics like anxiety, insecurity, and unhealthy relationships. And I really like this. There was definitely some that stood out to me as far as like the sinking goes, but then also like the rising above and how you can evolve and move out of those dark places. So I did enjoy this poetry collection. Okay, in the month of June, I finally finished this book that I have been working on reading for forever. And that is, nope, you can't see it again, <laughs> Mindfulness, An Eight-Week Plan for Finding Peace in a Frantic World by Mark Williams and Danny Penman, forward by John Kabat-Zinn. And this book is a workbook. So you're working at it section at a time. There's a lot of pages that I turned on for things that I want to remember, keep with me and continue to work on because if it's out of sight, out of mind, and it's definitely something that I want to remain useful. I didn't always do all of the meditations during this just because that's something that I gotta like fan myself. It's so freaking hot. I'm breaking a sweat. I have like a fine top on and then I have scrubs on the bottom half. So I'm like, Phew. okay. So anyways, um, I do find this to be a great introduction to mindfulness. And if it's something that you're interested in, I would say definitely check it out. I found that there's a lot of applicable things for most people throughout this. And I definitely took a lot away from it. Okay. And then probably my favorite nonfiction thing that I read for the month is This Is How You Heal by Brianna Weist. And Brianna Weist is a very beloved author in my yoga studio. So they read passages from her work all the time. And I had already read from her before. So I was already a fan but that kind of spurred me on to pick up this one which I hadn't read before and so it also is like I don't know if I said this part before but like when you're ready this is how you heal and so it's definitely not trying to like push people to heal before it is their time and even on the back like it says healing is not a one-time event and I think that this is just it has so much great advice for finding yourself coming into yourself being who you're meant to be. And the thing I love about her books and the way that she discusses everything is her books are not meant to like make you be better and more and push yourself to always be the best and to use your full potential. Her books are also very quiet and grounding and you are okay as you are just existing and being. And I think that's something that's really cool. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of fantasy romance that I read. I have two books. I swear to God, Jennifer Armentrout, why are all of your titles so similar and your books so similar? I can't even keep the series straight, but this is weird because we're going out of order. So what I should have done coming back to YouTube is put these in order of, okay, here's the first month that I missed and then go chronologically to where we're catching up because you're going to see series and then you're going to see 
the earlier books in the series in like my May wrap up. Anyways, it's not too important, but what number book is this? Okay, so from her Flesh and Fire series, I read A Light in the Flame in the month of June, and this is book two in that series. It's very similar to her, oh my gosh, what is the other blood? It's very similar to her Blood and Ash series, but the main character is different. So this main character is a lot more fiery and fierce and a go-getter and brave, but I love the tropes in this. I love the dynamic between our two love interests and their chemistry and interactions and everything. So I really, really like this spinoff series. So I read the second book in June and I'm not gonna get into like what this is about. It is a prequel to the other series. So I will say that. And in June, I also read book five, no four one two three four book four in the blood and ash series which is the war of two queens and this series like i don't know maybe i should i'm not sure at this point in time speaking to you in october if i'm going to continue reading it to be honest because like book five is a retelling of book one from the other person's perspective and i'm just idea enough that i'm not here for that but i think i might pick up book six i'm not really sure I really have enjoyed this series and it's like these books are so long and not a lot happens for how long they are but somehow listening to them via audio I've still really enjoyed them so do, do with that what you will uh, but I thought this was another good installment I liked it okay the next pile is all fantasy romance again and we're gonna kind of lump them together because they are all by the same author so I read three novels and one novella by this author in the month of June let's begin with The Serpent and the Wings of Night, this beloved booktube, TikTok, whatever you call it, favorite. Now, I need to set these down. I have to preface by saying the first series that I read by Carissa Broadbent was her other series. And I really enjoy the other series a lot more than this one. So I was mildly disappointed when reading this. I don't know what it was, but I didn't like the character dynamics as much. I didn't like our main character as much. Um, so the other series is by far my favorite from her and I hope she does more in that world. Um, but this is like a vampire romance. There's a lot of like twists and turns and hidden secrets and like enemies to lovers. We're dealing with like a tournament games of survival and yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. The romance scenes are good, but I gotta put it out there that I don't think it's nearly as good as her other series in saying that. So I read The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And then I also read, oh, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. Why have I never said that title out loud before ever? So this one's kind of quite a bit longer than the other one and no regrets in reading both of them. I would definitely read pretty much everything she is gonna write in this world because I believe this is gonna be six books and focusing on different people. So I read those two. Glad I did, enjoyed my time reading them. Within that world, I also read Six Scorched Roses, and this is a little novella about some of the side characters, and I was skeptical, I was not going to read it, but then I just kind of wanted more from her and more from her world, and it packs a punch. Like, it is not long, it is just under 200 pages, and I think it does an amazing job. I love the formatting, I loved the backstory to these characters and what we learn about them. I think I liked reading it after the second book, even though a lot of people say you read book one and then this and then book two. I liked the order that I read it in and I think it's a really good novella. And then the last thing I read in June by Carissa Broadbent is Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. And I'm not gonna lie, I really liked this one too. Um, I didn't like it as much, I don't think, as the other series. I don't know. I really liked the format and the story and the characters. Like it had good romance scenes and so I just think that she's a really solid author that I would always pick up from in the future when I'm looking to read something fantasy romance. I think she does a solid job at world building, fantasy, character development, romance, and plot which is a lot to bite off and so for her to successfully do those things I think is saying a lot. They're not all like stellar exceeding my expectations, but they're meeting my expectations, which I think says a lot. 
You just said that. So this is the four things I read by Carissa Broadbent. Okay, I did finish two fantasy series in the month of June. So I wanna talk about those first. The one that I loved so, so, so much. Actually, both of these have something in common that I really loved because they're a bit of like sci-fi fantasy mixture, which is my favorite thing of all time. And so if you guys didn't remember, or maybe you didn't know, because maybe I started reading it after I left book two, I don't remember at this point. Either way, my favorite trilogy that I've read in so long is, uh, what is the name of the series? Burning Blade and Silver Eye by Jingo Wexler. And so the third one is Emperor of Ruin. The first one is Ashes of the Sun. Yeah, that's the name of it. So I'm pretty sure like you guys have probably heard about that going around on booktube. It was like brought up but I never heard a lot of people reading it so I was like I kind of want to like know what this is about so in fact my phone overheated sitting in the windowsill because it's that hot so where was I I'm not sure Ashes of the Sun was talked about a little bit but I never heard anyone really rave over how much they loved it but that girl is me I'm here to tell you like if you like Star Wars it's a mild Star Wars influenced book not mild it's very influenced by Star Wars in a way that if you're reading it you have to go into it being okay with the heavy heavy influence like don't expect like a light influence it is a heavy influence by star wars but there is this really cool sci-fi fantasy technology these giant machines but then they have things that are like lightsabers and they have like the order and they have masters who help train them there's a lot a lot of similarities and my star wars loving heart was living for it um, the characters are a bit cheesy. It feels very young adult. So also, no, going into it, feels very young adult. Any of the interactions between the male and female, you're gonna, you're gonna roll your eyes. You're gonna be like, what? But it gets better as you go. Uh, book three didn't have it as much. So yeah, I adore all of this with my whole entire heart. And I think this series is just wonderful. So this was book three that I finished in June. And the other book that I finished in June as well, well, series that I finished I mean I read Locklands by Robert Jackson Bennett book three in the Foundry side trilogy I don't even know what it's called but that's what I'm calling it and this also is a mixture of sci-fi and fantasy which I absolutely adore and so I was so pleasantly surprised by how much I remembered I don't even think I read a recap of what happened in the first two books but it didn't really matter because I still like came back to everything very quickly. I love these characters. I absolutely love the magic in this. I think that the most fun part, the thing that makes this series worth, worth it for me is the magic, the scribing, the world building, and the imagery that I get. I don't get a lot of imagery when I read but this book makes me and so I think that he knocked it out of the ballpark for book three to conclude this trilogy. Like I was, I couldn't put it down. I was living for every page and I cannot wait to read whatever he writes next. Okay, next I'm gonna throw in some random, like more literary fiction, one I really loved and one I didn't love so much. So one that I love the cover of and I'm sad I didn't really love it is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin. And this I have heard nonstop praise from everyone who's ever freaking picked it up. And so I was like, surely I'm gonna love it. Like it sounds interesting and I really like the video game aspect um, that was brought into it. And there was a lot of really good things about this book, but at the same time I did DNF it at one point and then decided to go ahead and finish it. I feel like this book wanted to just rip your heart out. And so she just included like every bad thing that could happen. And there was a lot with like sexual assault or like the way that she was with her partner that I just didn't love the way that it was included. And I don't think it was necessarily handled with as much care as I would have liked to see. And so that just sort of rubbed me the wrong way. And then it was just like one thing after another, after another. And I was like, are we kidding? And granted, I love messed up books, okay? A Little Life is one of my favorite books of all time. Betty is one of my favorite books of all time. So I do not shy away from hard topics and hard to read subject matter, but it just depends on how it's handled. So yeah, this is still one of my favorite book covers ever, ever, but I didn't love it like y'all loved it. And the other literary fiction that was phenomenal that I read in the month of June is a Biography of X by Catherine Lacey. And I would like to read Pew by this author. This, I don't even know how to describe to you. It is a biography being told 
by the lover of X, um, their widow, and they are diving into, because X is never gendered, I believe, never, and they are diving into the past of who X was, and you can see that there's so much secrecy and things that have been hidden, and so you're watching this person's life story unfold and being told, and this is also set in like an alternate history of America, and so that aspect was really cool too. I thought it was very imaginative and unique and just something really different and the storytelling was compelling the characters were compelling the format was awesome like I just really if you read this physically which I did li I listen to the audio but I would recommend having the physical as well because there's photographs in it throughout which is kind of cool since it is like a biography but yeah if you have not heard of this I highly recommend and like I said the audiobook was great okay we've made it to the end of the pile almost so one of the other things two more fantasy one of the other things I read in June was The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chakshi I have read this author's young adult books and not loved them like there's some of my I don't know. I really didn't like them at the time. So I was nervous going into her adult book because I had heard some mixed things about it, but I just decided to listen to the audiobook on a whim and devoured it. I thought this was beautiful. I love the storytelling aspect. I love the way it was narrated and written. The back and forth, you are following like two different timelines and two different perspectives and it's twisty and turny and secretive. It's very like gothic, historical feeling, very beautifully written. And that's really all I can say about it. Like one thing that I thought was cool too is you're following like a male perspective and it's about this marriage and this friendship and like fairy tale folklore and want and greed and love and not and it left you with a really uneasy feeling in a way that like I loved it. It was very unsettling and satisfying if you're someone like me who likes a bit more of like not everything super wrapped up and re resolved and I would love to read something else like this from her in the future. Okay, last but not least was one that I was most excited for because I love this author's other books. And that is the book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. Beautiful cover. So this was a rough start for me. Like the beginning felt very slow. I had a hard time getting invested. I didn't know exactly what to expect, but I know that it wasn't this that I thought I was getting into. And so it really took me by surprise. However, I will say I stuck with it. I had already bought the brand new hardcover for what? $30. So I was like, I'm not going to DNF this. I already own it. And I stuck with it and it got so much better for me as we kept going. And so I think this story turned out to be a lot more than I thought it was going to be. It's very convoluted and twisty. You have to like use your imagination a lot and things don't necessarily always make sense. And I loved that. It was very imaginative. You guys, it overheated again and I went and put it in the freezer and I probably damaged my phone at this point, but whatever. Anyways, um, so there was so much to this that I wasn't expecting. And so at first that made me a little hesitant, made me feel like this isn't the book I wanted. But once I accepted it for the book that it was, I thought it was wonderful. It really talked a lot of, about important themes and um, direct parallels to like racism and prejudice and classism and learning and knowledge, like a lot of things that are really important that I sort of didn't expect it to go that deep on. And so I really applaud it for that. And I got really attached to the characters. And so by the end of this, I was dying to pick up book two. You're definitely gonna want book two when you read this. I didn't even know it was going to be a series. I actually thought it was a standalone. So I think it's a series anyways. It, it leaves off where it should be a series. But yeah, that is the last book that I read in the month of June. And let me know if you guys have read any of these 15 books that I've talked about today. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments about them and I will definitely be making a May wrap up at some point so you guys can get caught up on the books I've been reading and actually before that I'm gonna have to make a September wrap up because we are on October 3rd now at this point so we're into a new month and let me just give you a little spoiler. October September was a huge freaking reading month for me. I read so much so that's gonna be a really big wrap up to look forward to. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. I've been thinking.